Okay, we'll, uh, we'll uh, open the meeting of the work sessions for um, December 14th. And uh, Gary, what's up first? Thank you, Vice Chair Savas. First, Chair Smith is out of the office today, so Commissioner Savas is Vice Chair, will chair the meeting. Uh, Commissioners Fisher and Schrader are online on Zoom. Commissioner Schull is in the room. So with that, we will get started. This is the last issues for the calendar year. We have a lot of business for you to conduct. First, Sheriff's Office body camera purchase. I'll invite Nancy Artman, who's the finance manager of the Sheriff's Office, and whoever from County Council, Andrew Naylor from County Council's office, please come forward. Uh, this is an update for you, and I do have a question. What, what needs to happen today, and what can wait until January? But Nancy and Andrew will fill us in. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Chair Savas, Commissioners, Administrator Schmidt. We are here before you today to request approval to purchase additional body-worn cameras, software licenses, tasers and related training material. As you recall, these funds are sponsored by the levy. The voters approve this on the May 18th ballot. This purchase will occur over the course of five fiscal years, and we are seeking authority in the form of signature of a board order. I understand that we have until the end of January in order to conduct this business so that we can get the, the price that the vendor has provided us, which is a discounted rate. There is a process for notice, which Andrew will address. Good morning, commissioners. That's right. We have to do seven days notice to tell the world, just given the dollar value of this contract we're going to use. And if we receive a response, we have to respond accordingly. So um, what needs to be decided today is whether this board approves the purchase in general. If it does, nothing else should need to happen, provided we have our quote through the end of January. Um, if that's correct, and we're confirming that, then the board will see a board order along the lines of what was in the packet may be revised on its consent agenda in January. If for some reason the quote does expire at the end of the month and we received incorrect information, um, provided this board still wants to proceed, Gary will have authority while the board's on recess to issue the purchase order. So in either situation, we have the capacity to proceed provided the board approves the purchase. And that's why we're before you today. We want to make sure you're comfortable moving forward because either I'll sign it under the recess authority if necessary, otherwise we'll wait till January when you're back, but either way we want your blessing to move forward on this project. Well, I would certainly say that we want to um, honor what the voters intended, so that's, that's pretty clear to us. And so my question is more along the lines of going forward as purchase orders are put out over the course of five years, those will still be coming back to us as needed, right? Yes, in any capacity where we exceed the authority to spend of the sheriff's office, that will be coming back before you. Um, the amounts vary from, they begin with fiscal year 21-22 at 299,000 and continue through 25-26 in the amount of 441,000. We would be happy to come before you each fiscal year and provide an update. Uh, before any action is taken, if that is the will of this board. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Fisher has a question. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Vice Chair Savas. Uh, my question, um, I re recall discussing this whole issue when I became a new commissioner with um, then Sheriff Roberts, and one issue that was challenging in dealing with body cameras was storing the data I'm assuming that the cost of that is not part of this proposal, and I'm just curious what, um, how that plays into all of the overall costs. Right, that is a great question, Commissioner. I do not have that answer today in terms of the actual cost, but I can speak with our IT director and get that information to you for sure. Yeah, that will be good, just to keep um, a track on it, and because it's really important. And we've got to just make sure we dot all our I's and cross all our T's. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner, or not, I mean, Administrator Schmidt. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to be administrator only. Thank you. Uh, I, I do recall this was, this, there is a plan in the Sheriff's Office to handle the technological needs as far as the recording, the videos, the retention, and that part of that is covered by the levy. And part of it is, you recall, Commissioners, I did authorize additional general funds for this purpose in the current fiscal year in the budget. So this is something the county supports, the board supports, I support. So this is covered either in existing budget or through part of the levy as well to have the technology uh, uh, requirements of the body camera, camera cameras. Yes, thank you for that clarification. 
so, so there won't be an additional ask for any other funds to fund that. That'll be either That's covered correct. by the general fund of the sheriff's office or, or the levy funds. Correct, yes. Yeah. The piece that I don't have before me today is the actual cost for storage per year. Okay. But I can get that number. All right. Uh, any issues? Do we, what, any action, Gary, specifically? Only, I, Stephen or Andrew, a formal motion or just a head nod? What do you recommend? I think just a head nod should be sufficient. Head nod is sufficient that you approve yeah. us moving forward. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Fisher is raising her thumb. Commissioner Schrader, <laughs> are you okay? Thumb, please, or her verbal? Thumb is also yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nancy and Andrew. Next, Association of Oregon Counties Board Seat for Counties with Population of 250,000 or more. Uh, this is a request from the Association of Oregon Counties because we are a county with over population of 250,000 people. We have an actual seat, a board seat for such a designation on the board of directors of the Association of Oregon Counties. Commissioner Savas has been serving in this role. His two-year term is now up. Uh, AOC is asking for an answer by the end of this month, which since this is your last meeting is why I'm raising this for you. I'm um, currently Commissioner Schrader already sits on the board and the Legislative Committee of AOC as a past president. Commissioner Fisher already sits on the board and Legislative Committee as the District 8 Chair. Commissioner Savas still retains his seat on the Legislative Committee as a District 8 Delegate. So this is for a seat on the full board for counties with population of 250,000 or more. Uh, Commissioner Schell potentially could do this because he has not one of these commissioners I've just mentioned and Commissioner Fisher has her hand raised. Okay, so let me just uh, just comment on this first and then I'll take uh, those folks in order. Um, so I have had a, uh, my work assignments um, have just stacked up on me and I have not attended a lot of the AOC meetings. So I, transportation especially has just been uh, overwhelming so I've been very dedicated to my assignments, and on this one here, I'm happy to let someone else fill in that seat. I don't have to be that person, because again, I, I just haven't been able to be as attended, attentive to this uh, as I could have been. Commissioner Scholl, and I'll follow by Commissioner, who? Uh, Fisher? Fisher. Fisher. Yes, Vice Chair of Savas. I'd like to just say that I'd be happy to accept this, this board seat. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. What I would prefer that we do is, since um, Chair Smith is not here, would like to gauge her interest as she has become also more engaged with AOC. And I would suggest that we um, talk about it when we get back and we're all here. And, and if we do need, we'll just be vacant until filled, but we should be able to address it at the first of the year when we return and we're all present. <laughs> Okay, um, Commissioner Schrader, can I ask you what your thoughts are? N knowing we have a December 31st or January 1 deadline? Uh, really, Sonia, I would, I, I think that Chair Smith would be fine with Commissioner Shell doing this. You know, um, she's gonna have, she has an awfully full schedule too. And, uh, and for example, she's going to be um, on the board that the authority board for the locks to, which is gonna be a huge, huge lift. And so I, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay deciding today. I, I really am. And, 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 and then if Commissioner Smith comes back and we need to make a change or Chair Smith, but I, I think she'd be fine. I really do. So, okay, so Gary. I'm okay. Right. I would recommend Thank a you, Martha. Do, you, do we need a motion? Yes, please. So uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, to uh, appoint Mark Scholl or Commissioner Scholl as the um, to uh, the representative on AOC for. Um, okay, for two fifty two hundred fifty thousand. Right. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll so move. So moved by Commissioner Schrader. Seconded. Seconded by Commissioner Scholl. Any other discussion? Commissioner Fisher has her hand up. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, thank you. Given that um, this board did remove Commissioner Scholl from his liaison duties, and we have not discussed that as a board about what is involved in re re implementing them. And I know that Chair Smith was going to bring that up after the first of the year. She had a plan to do that. I just think it is disrespectful to the chair for us to move forward 
with this at this time, waiting until the first of the year is seems appropriate to me, given the magnitude of what this board has decided in the past. Thanks. Gary, have you had any communications with Commissioner Smith on this topic? Um, I have not specifically on this request. I do know that she has uh, expressed, I, I have not heard her express interest on serving on any AOC committees at this time, based on her workload. Yeah, vote. and I, I don't know if it was Commissioner Fisher or Schrader that indicated that uh, Commissioner Chair Smith has indicated that she wanted to bring up the early next year, January, um, the assignments um, again. So I, I took that as a signal that um, Commissioner Smith would be supportive of reinstating some of Commissioner Scholl's assignments. That's how I interpreted that. But that's, I, don't, can't, I can't speak for Commissioner uh, uh, Smith about that at all. So I, that's, that's on me. I don't want to, I don't want to represent Commissioner Chair Smith on that pos particular position without any authorization, but I, but I did interpret it that way. Commissioner Schrader, did you interpret it that way as well? Um, shoulda, woulda, could, you know, I, I just think that it's time for us to move on and um, be a full board and have people do duties. I, I, I think we just need to, Again, I'm okay with moving forward today. I just, I just don't see it as a big, big right. deal. Okay, Shannon, could and you please take the roll? Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. No. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Vice Chair Savas. Aye. All right, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. I'll let AOC know that Commissioner Shaw will fill that seat. Thank you. Next, your business meeting agenda review for this Thursday, December 16, 2021, 10 a.m. It's your final business meeting for the calendar year. You'll have COVID-19 updates, a presentation on a year in review, accomplishments 2021, a video from Public and Government Affairs, a public hearing on a board order for the annexation to Clackamas County Service District Number 1, uh, and then a large consent agenda that hopefully you will authorize today to move forward. If you have any questions on any of these items, if you'll please let me know prior to Thursday. Next, advisory boards and commission appointments. Shannon, would you go ahead, please? Um, up today, we have the library district of Clackamas County. We have two people to recommend. Uh, let me see. So sorry, I've lost my place. Um, so G. Jeffrey Bornefeld and Natalie Smith are being recommended to serve on the Library District of Clackamas County and member cities. Yeah, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, both um, Mr. Bornefeld and, um, and uh, Ms. Smith have been um, stellar at representing um, the LDAC Advisory Committee um, and they're simply up for renewal, so I would recommend that we approve them today. So moved. It's been moved, is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Shannon, please take the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Vice Chair Savas? Aye. Motion carries. Gary? Great, thank you. Next, if uh, with your permission, Chair, we'll move to the consent agenda requests. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll start with finance. This is a request for a public hearing. We're doing this two weeks in advance because you don't have a meeting, you don't meet again until January, and this would be on the January 6th business meeting. It is approval of a Clackamas County supplemental budget resolution for fiscal year 2021-2022. Because it's over 10%, it does require a public hearing. Elizabeth. Yes, thank you, Administrator Schmidt and Commissioners. Um, today we have a supplemental budget uh, review that will come to you on January 6th. This is following Oregon lo local budget law found in ORS 294 that requires a resolution uh, to change our appropriations and our budget spending limits. Uh, today the uh, supplemental budget is $24.8 million and Includes a couple of different items that I'll summarize. We have adjustments in the general fund support for uh, additional FTE and assessment and taxation, human resources, and the surveyor department. Uh, we're also recognizing some ARPA funding expenditures and transferring uh, those appropriately. 
And then also in H3S, we have uh, recognition of additional funds from Oregon Emergency Rental Assistance Program and Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program for those to be spent for those programs. And then also uh, we have Stone Creek Golf Course recognizing carryover fund balance for delayed projects that were uh, not done in the prior year so we can have those done in this coming fiscal year or this current fiscal year. Okay. Anyone have any issues or questions? Uh, Commissioner Fisher is saying she does not see the materials for this posted online. Uh, Shannon, are you able to address that? Was this in the packet? I will, I will address it and make sure that she gets it. Okay, we'll send it to all of you commissioners. It should be online. If it's not, I apologize. Uh, it's just a staff report for the January 6th meeting, public hearing. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Next, uh, these are regular consent agenda requests. We'll start with the district attorney's office. Approval of a 2021-2023 Victims of Crime Act and Criminal Fine Account non-competitive program grant. Uh, total grant amount is $1,446,005 with no in-kind match. Funded through the Oregon Department of Justice. No county general funds are involved. Uh, Carrie, is that correct? Please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Carrie Walker. I'm the director of the Victims Assistance Program at the District Attorney's Office. I was here on July 29th to get your approval to apply for this grant. It's a non-competitive grant that we receive every two years that funds the basic staffing for our victims uh, assistance program. Um, I am requesting that the grant agreements be put on the consent agenda for your signature. Okay. Any questions? Any, any issues? Challenges? Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Carrie. Next for disaster management. One, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Colton Fire District for COVID vaccine administration. Contract maximum value is $150,000. No county general funds are involved. Uh, Daniel, go ahead. Daniel Nybauer, Interim Director of Disaster Management. Uh, the first is just what it says, to have Colton Fire help us with vaccine administration uh, for, the, for COVID. Okay. Chris Schultz. Daniel, uh, I noticed that uh, the amount for uh, this vaccine administration uh, that we dealt with last week to some of the bigger cities, mm -hmm. like, was the same amount. That so was a why, 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 Colton's a very small population. Why are they getting the same amount as some of the bigger cities? The ones previously were renewals uh, for that, so it was this is a new um, uh, contract with Colton. So I can I can follow up on on details as to why the amounts were the same, but they were for the bigger cities. It was extending uh, and amending. So the, if they don't use it, you, correct? Not, okay. Yes. Yeah, I was kind of view that language when it says contract maximum that they can use up to that, okay. but if they don't, if they only use a fraction of it, they it's reimbursement based. So okay. there is a, a sample of the invoice, I believe, in the back of the packet. Okay. That demonstrates it's just okay. used. Okay. Any any other questions, ish, concerns? Okay. Next. Two, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon State Police for the transfer of medical examiner equipment for mass fatality incident response, funded through the Department of Homeland Security's Urban Area Securities Initiative. No county general funds are involved. Is there two pieces of equipment that the medical examiner and the state uh, uses as well that we got through this uh, federal grant and the state is maintaining and will replace the equipment and so we're transferring that so that that is kind of on their books to continue to maintain and eventually replace. Okay, see no concerns, next. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Next, Health, Housing, Human Services. One, approval of an amendment to the Clackamas Ambulance Service Contract. This amendment si signifies the intent to develop a performance-based contract amendment. There's no fiscal impact. We had a policy session on this, commissioners, a few weeks ago. Rod, go ahead. Yes, and to uh, repeat the administrator, uh, this amendment is a follow-up to the policy session held on 11-23-21. Uh, the amendment will provide the time to update the ambulance service plan to support a performance-based contract amendment that ensures the continued advancement, enhancement, and innovation across the EMS system in Clackamas County. No general funds are involved. All right. I recall there was unanimous support for this, so. Yes, yes. All right, item two, approval of a 2022 revenue agreement with the Oregon Health Authority for the operation and financing of community mental health, addiction treatment, recovery and prevention services, and problem gambling programs. Agreement value is $8,383,001.70, funded through the state of Oregon. No county general funds are involved. 
Yes, this agreement provides the funding uh, local administration and operation of the program I just mentioned, ensuring behavioral health and addiction services to residents of Clackamas County. Okay. Any other questions? No questions. All right, item three, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas Fire District number one for the Project HOPE program. Contract maximum is $31,090, funded through the University of Baltimore combating opioid overdose through community level initiative grant. No county general funds are involved. Yes, this agreement provides a community paramedic uh, to the Project HOPE program just described. <clears throat> Any further information? Okay, Rod, uh, tying this one and the, just the previous one with the 8 million for, you know, drug addiction apparently, um, alcohol addiction, mental health, um, that's a lot, that, that's, that, that's pretty much, is that pretty much the operating fund uh, resources for uh, mental health here at Clackamas County? Yes, one is through behavioral health at first, the, the larger amount, and then the public health uh, is specific to the Project HOPE program. Um, so I would say they all are serving similar populations and could cross over, but they're two separate programs, if that's what you're asking. Well, thank you for that. I just, just want to just take, just put some commentary in that um, even yesterday, at length, so many people are asking or expecting that the state of Oregon or us, Clackamas County specifically, step up with, you know, addri more addiction treatment, uh, behavioral health treatment, a facility of some sorts. I'm hearing that law enforcement, not just the sheriff's office, but others are really in need of that 24-7 um, mm -hmm. to be able to help people in their crisis. So I'm just hoping that we can do something with the at the state level um, and maybe some funds can come our way to make that happen, but I just, that's just my commentary. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, Mr. Scholl? Yes, uh, on this Project HOPE program, I did a ride along last spring uh, with a person from Fire District Number 1 that does this, and that's, this is $31,090 that's very well spent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And it also ties into the first agenda item under this, which was the ambulance contract. A lot of our emergency providers are providing the same kind of treatment. So we have a huge challenge, and I don't think these, all these resources combined simply aren't enough to do, to do that kind of work. So I know that's on all our shoulders. Yes. To yes. And we're, hopefully we're, we can advocate yeah. for, for something. But it's just, I think more and more people, I see, we see the people that are homeless and struggling houseless and, and our emergency responders that there's a huge need out there and I, I think that there's an expectation from the public that we step up our game. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we compete, keep on rallying for that at AOC and other places and mm -hmm. see if we can't get something to happen here in the state. Yeah, we, we appreciate your advocacy and, and your advocacy for partnership with all the cities involved as well. So that's really moving this agenda forward for us. So we appreciate your support in that area. Great, thank you, Rod. Uh, next up. Item four, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Multnomah Education Service District for Medicaid Administrative Claiming Coordination Services. Contract not to exceed $10,000. Is, funding is provided by the state of Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Yes, and this, uh, this IGA for uh, Medicaid um, Administrative Claiming Coordination Services through Multnomah Education Service District. So it's, it's sort of a... Um, uh, administrative function, but it, it, without them, we wouldn't be able to move our patients through as quickly. So uh, that's why this agreement, we're asking for this agreement. Okay. See no concerns. All right. Thank you, Rod. Okay, thank you. Next, Water Environment Services. One, approval of a contract between Water Environment Services and Tribeca Transport for a long haul biosolid, biosolids transport and application. Maximum contract value of $2 million. Funded through West Operational Funds, no county general funds are involved. Greg and Chris, go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Commissioners. Gary, uh, I'm going to hand it right off to Chris. Good morning, Commissioners. Chris Story, I am the Assistant Director of Clackamas Water Environment Services. This project has been discussed with you a couple different times, but really it is an outgrowth of the directive the board gave us to uh, be efficient with ratepayer dollars to build public trust in government by being the best stewards we can be. Uh, part of that process over the last several years has been an evaluation of our hauling program where we have been outliers in our industry by doing that in-house compared to contracting out like the city of Portland or Washington County or the city of Gresham. Uh, so we evaluated that, uh, had discussions with our employees about that, ultimately tested it with the market with an RFP and have found a successful bidder that we are now bringing forward for your consideration and request that it be on the business meeting agenda. We are estimating it will save us over $3 million over the next five years. 
Uh, is this time sensitive? We are hoping to get the, the contract up and running. It's actually been a little bit late thus far. We gave the notice to proceed. There's a 30-day a protest period, then a clock for notice to the union. Both are running. Um, but from a standpoint of operations, we're hoping to get it up and running by the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that we had discussions about this, and I was hoping to get some follow-up um, with um, some of the difficulties I had with this particular one. So um, we'll see where it goes. Any any questions, concerns? No. Okay, we will um, move that to hey, the... Uh, so, Commissioner, Commissioner Paul, Fisher. Sorry, my hand is raised. Yeah, I have had concerns with this um, since the beginning. And like you, Commissioner Savas, I've stated them. I think, you know, for me, a really important criteria is if we are going to outsource, we need to make sure that the jobs that are created and that outsourcing are taking our public dollars and making them towards public good, which means they need to be comparable, have benefits, be sustainable living wages. I don't have any idea what this does, and I'm very concerned about it. So if we do put this through the board's will to put this through to consent, then I will ask that it be held separately and I will have to vote no because I have not had my questions answered. Yeah, yeah, and I, without divulging the, those details, um, there's some loose ends, again, I kind of, you know, try to allude to earlier and in the past. So I, I too suspect that there may not be the votes to carry this um, with the absence of the chair. Certainly we would be open to <laughs> blazing it forward. I, I will remind the commissioners we actually sought the information they requested as far as wages. The company who was the bidder is not required by law to do it. And indeed, uh, they have business secrets rights to maintain that privacy. And ultimately, from our perspective, it is our responsibility to make sure that what we're paying is the lowest cost to the ratepayers, not necessarily what's in the best interest of everyone across the country and various entities. We can't address it all. Yes, I don't feel it's the role of the Board of Commissioners to encumber a private company who is, has competed for a contract in the open market. It's not, I don't think it's appropriate for the Board to do anything to encumber that contract or to encumber the ability of Tribeca Transport LLC to be competitive in the marketplace. Yeah, I just for clarity, I know this is confusing because there are some things here that I can't divulge. I think that are, are, are delicate. So without saying that, I don't, <clears throat> I, I don't uh, have anything I think that would be considered an encumbrance upon the private sector. That's not my issue, just to make that perfectly clear. Uh, Administrator Smith. Yeah, so I'm just, uh, I, I can count like everyone here can. So it appears that if this were to go forward this Thursday, it would not pass. So either you can, we can do that and see where it lands, or we can hold it till January when all five commissioners are present and try again. So I will not sign this during the board recess, so it's either this Thursday or wait till the full board is here in January. What would you like to do, gentlemen? Uh, I noticed that Commissioner Schrader has her hand up. I'd okay. like to okay. hear. Yeah, I'm very conflicted with this. I would like to put it off for the time being because um, uh, I was conflicted when I approved it the first time, and I'm still conflicted because I'm not sure it really is the best way to go. So mm -hmm. I'm okay taking more time with it and, and moving it until we have everybody back if we want to go there. So. Commissioner Fisher's hand is raised also. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, I just want to just reinforce that as a governing body, of a, you know, we're a $1.4 billion budget, the values that we hold and the decisions that we make are important. And it's not, and we have a lot, we do a lot of, make a lot of decisions that affect private industry. And in many of those decisions, we look at how is this affecting our community? How is it promoting economic strength for the people that are on the other end of all of these decisions. Um, it's just our role. It's our role as elected officials to look at the big picture. So uh, I just wanted to reinforce that. 
you know, there's also, I just want to just state, there's also a, a budgetary angle of this in which there will be an FTE change, and I, and I think it's a timing of those new positions versus the, per, per, the potential of the retiring positions that I also raised um, as a concern or a question, I guess, not necessarily a concern. I don't want to put the wrong um, uh, tone about that. Uh, Administrator Schmidt. Yes. Um, uh, so. If, I'm going to comment, thank you, because uh, you always invite me to do that, commissioners. Uh, staff's doing exactly what you asked them to do, that I've asked them to do, look at ways to be efficient on how we spend public dollars. West staff has done exactly that. No one is losing their jobs on this. I will also say publicly, we are not privatizing employee jobs at Clackamas County. So that's a clear statement from me as the county administrator, and nor are, did I ever hear that from you commissioners. So with that, what I recommend is we pull this item for this week, and I also suggest we probably need a work session with the board and or an executive session because there clearly needs to be more conversation with the board before this even comes back is my suggestion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gary. Commissioner Schull. Gentlemen, how's this delay going to affect this contract, the contract price? We don't know. Okay. And can I, yep, Gary, can ahead. I answer your yep. question? Yep. Um, you know, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, you're, you guys have a job. I have a job. Um, my job is to do what's the best for our ratepayers. I realize, and, and you're the decision makers. Um, I feel like this type of exercise and proposal and analysis of what we do, how we do it, how we can do it more efficient, that's my job. And I'm happy to call the question. Uh, I'm happy to, to talk more about it. Um, but we're going to bring those issues, and it's, and it's your, your folks' decision. And I, I, I'm fine with whichever way it goes. Um, I'm just doing my job. Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I'd just like to make one last comment. And in my opinion, we should move forward with this. We've talked about it. Wes has briefed us several times over the year. I think this is in the best interest of Wes as ratepayers in the county to move forward with this today. And, and yeah, I, th I think a work session would be a good idea. I'd love to discuss this so there's better understanding. I think that anyone who's listening to this might have some curiosity as to what this is about, and I'm happy to do that in the appropriate work sessions um, or executive session as needed. So we will, we will defer this to uh, January. That is my recommendation, and uh, let's schedule a policy session ASAP, first week in January or second week. Okay, certainly. Certainly. Okay. And if the board could send what questions or information you'd specifically like briefing upon, we can make sure that's a productive time and answers the questions that you have. Okay. Thank okay. You. So Thank I'm going to pull this item from the agenda, consent agenda for, for this week. Thank you very much, Greg and Chris. Uh, next, technology services. One, approval of a purchase of broadband expansion supplies from Power and Telephone Supply Company. Total contract value is $317,418.75. Funded through the American Rescue Plan Act project funding. Uh, no county general funds are involved, and this funding is from the county that the county has authorized, correct? Okay. For ARPA funds? Great. Uh, Dave and Duke are here. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Commissioners and Administrator Schmidt. Um, I'm here with Duke Dexter, our project manager from CBX. So, obviously, we're talking to CBX here. Uh, we have a purchase request that's tied to some good news. Uh, the phase one construction of the ARPA broadband is going full bore. No pun there, sorry. But uh, we're going full bore and actually doing very well. But as such, we need to buy a lot of fiber. Mm. Uh, given the state of demand in the market, we are trying to move forward. And thanks to some excellent help from purchasing, we went out with a bid mm -hmm. to order what we require for the first phase and probably a good part of the second phase of the build. Um, we had eight people bid, or eight companies bid. The winning bidder was the Power and Telephone Supply Company with a $317,418 bid for fiber. We would like to proceed forward with that procurement. This is through ARPA funds, and it'll allow us to complete our phase one and get moving on to phase two bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how many miles of fiber does $317,000 buy? Well, you got to that one. How about feet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without doing the math in my head, I know we bought 500,000 feet of drop cable. Oh. Uh, I think 80,000 feet, no, 40,000 feet of 96 count fiber cable, 80,000 feet of uh, 48 and 24. Now, is that going to provide the cable needed to get out to those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Those areas in the county um, that are currently unserviced 
by cable? Or is there going to be another requirement for more cable? Oh, we'll have more. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is this is just a yes. The yeah. First okay. Order. We just want to jump on it as soon as we could while the prices are where they are and availability is where it is. Okay. Good. Okay. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Vice Chair Savas. Uh, when this was approved for the um, broadband internet for the ARPA, using the ARPA dollars, the infrastructure bill from the federal government had not been passed yet. And I had asked the question of our um, public government affairs folks as to what are we going to expect to receive or what can we receive, what's potentially on the table to help fund this from the federal government? Because I do understand that a big chunk of money will be coming to the state for um, this purpose. And my, I have two questions. Number one, do we have an answer to what we will be receiving from the state or from the feds through the state? Or then number two, my next question is, if we are receiving, if we can have access to substantial resources, can we shift the payment for this to those other dollars? <laughs> so uh, at this time, your answers, unfortunately, are maybe. So most of the funding, you are correct, through the Build Back Better plan uh, will be filtered down through the state. Uh, it's not going to be similar to the American Rescue Plan. It's just not going to be a, it will be a lump of money, but it'll be uh, issued out in the form of grants. And so because there's kind of all this different federal money through different agencies, uh, we have, uh, uh, we are working with a consultant to try and uh, understand uh, those channels of funding and how they can work with uh, our ARPA funding and with the ears that we want to expand broadband fiber to. So I, I don't have a specific answer for you at this time, but it's something that we're working through uh, right now. Yeah, that, that makes perfect. Okay, just a follow-up, Chair Savas? Yep, please. So I guess this is a Gary, or I don't know if Elizabeth is still in the room. If we are able to switch out funding, streams is that going to be possible i want to make sure we expand broadband it's a huge need that is laid bare i just know we have a lot of needs and so if we can use other funds to do this and utilize our significant arpa dollars um that are going to this project for something else i want to see if that's possible uh, sure, we can have that conversation. If indeed we get money from the state or feds for broadband, and, and that's allowable, you could choose to reallocate the money you've already given to TS. But I, I will say that TS is making purchases now on the expectation they're going to get the money you've already authorized. So only until the state or feds provide that funding, we can't, we can't tell them, oh, no, we were kidding because they were, they're making purchases right now. But yes, we... Yeah, no, no, no. I don't want to be kidding. I really want to move forward with this. Yeah. I just want to know if that's possible bureaucratically, budget-wise, ARPA, um, um, I don't know, strings, I guess. I don't know the answers to those questions. Uh, I, I un understand your point you're trying to make, Commissioner Fisher, and I think perhaps uh, if that opportunity comes and we are eligible to either apply for a grant or receive a grant, I think the question is, will be, uh, do we, do we displace those dollars um, and free up ARPA dollars, or do we augment those new dollars for new expanded service? I guess that's a board decision and a board a work session, ideally, yes. mm -hmm. um, because there's two opportunities there that ought to be entertained. Yep. Yes, I like that, Commissioner Savas. I just want to make sure we aren't tying our hands with this. I want to make sure those options are still on the table. Yep. That's part of the reason why we did the phase approach, was so we could break it into doable chunks yeah. and actually finance and do the construction in those chunks and not just throw out $10 million for the fiber right off the bat. We break it into doable pieces. Okay. Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I'm, um, I, I, think that, I think that we can be flexible, um, but I do think we need to allow right now, again, purchases that have already been made, they, they, they're gonna, that's kind of, you know, cross that bridge. I will say in terms of broadband, what I hear from our superintendents and our school districts and our teachers and our education professionals is that uh, particularly during the pandemic and the way education is 
kind of been transformed and changed with online work that a lot of, there's a social um, equity component to this is that we do have children and adults who are unable to access information and education and, and things that are really uh, incredibly important for them uh, because of this lack of, of uh, connectivity in these areas. So I also don't want to lose sight that there is a real, um, that we have competing priorities. I know that that's part of our job, but I also want to make sure that we understand that there is a significant um, social impact and that it is an equity, in my mind, it's, it's, a, it's a real equity issue as well. And um, so I just want to make sure that gets on the record in terms of access, so. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Schrader. And that, that's exactly a uh, concern I think we, that I share as well. And that is that, you know, especially when we're talking about children, uh, whether it's healthcare, or education, or everything else, people need to have access. And I think uh, that, that applies, um, that equity lens needs to be applied. Um, and um, so I, I, I just don't know how you or I could uh, function without good internet service, right? We all count on that. Oh, but, but I mean, look at this. Can you imagine being out in, in an area where you don't have, you know, you don't have access to this? I mean, I really, it really is a huge issue in the, in the school districts and the education, our, our Clackamas Education District, they, they saw it as a huge, huge re, uh, issue. And I haven't talked to Larry Didway uh, about this in particular. I did talk to Jada about it, but I bet uh, it would not surprise me if that, that still is a significant issue um, within all of our districts in this county. Yeah, I, I think our work on NACO, it's very clear that if, if it's not yeah. clear to a lot, lot of folks that uh, um, broadband, access to broadband is considered a, a critical infrastructure piece yeah. and, and will be a part of our lives. And I think it's their expectation that um, we'll, it'll be provided, whether it's the private sector or grants or augmented by, by, uh, by funding from our federal government and our, and our local governments as well. So um, it, it's coming. And we got to be we just got to ready up for it. Yeah, it's a, it's a utility, and um, it can be public or private. But but now no one can function fully as a citizen anymore, um, really, without without the access in this country. I mean, that's it's kind of like having water, sewer, all of those things. This has become that critical a piece of infrastructure. All right. So I'm going to take that as, as reigning support to have this move forward for the consent agenda. I, I would say now, but I'm all right being flexible. If, if there are other ways we can, if that, that come forward that we can finance it. Um, I don't think there's anything, but I think right now we ought to move ahead with it. Yeah, I do. But I. Okay. Like but if sure, there are other sure. funds available, we can, we can certainly look at that. Commissioner Fisher, if we can close hey, this out, please, you. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Vice Chair Savas. I'm glad you, you know that I'm, I'm here in the queue. I am, this question is Gary question. Gary, is it appropriate for the board to um, ask staff or to set a policy? I guess it is already in our policy because we have that in our strategic framework, uh, but to go after, to explore any and all resources in regards to expanding um, internet in our community, or does that just go without saying that we are also interested in seeing this through? It is on one of your 10 uh, performance clackers priorities, Commissioner, so it's already there, and staff's working on it for you. Okay, I just know it's a lot of work to, when grants come down from the state, sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, do we really wanna apply for this? because it can be so cumbersome, but I really want us to go after any and all resources, and I'm pretty sure the rest of my commissioners would agree. Okay, anything else on this matter? As uh, Duke mentioned, we do have a consultant that's an expert in this that's helping us navigate through all those difficult uh, issues and find out which ones we qualify for or, just, or can't qualify for. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, Dave and Duke. Next, the Sheriff's Office. Uh, approval of a resolution to delegate signing authority of sensitive documents to the chair of the commission and the county administrator to sign on behalf of the county and its service districts. 
Nancy from the Sheriff's Office and Stephen County Council are here. Uh, please go ahead. Morning, Commissioners. Stephen Matkar here with Nancy Artman from the Sheriff's Office. What we have for the board's consideration today is a resolution which would delegate signing authority to the county administrator or the chair to sign sensitive documents for the remainder of this year through um, December 31st of 2022. When we say sensitive documents, we mean those where the disclosure of the content of the document, whether it's an IGA or a contract for courthouse security or jail security, would not be posted on the county's website on the consent agenda. Typically, all contracts are posted there. These would not. The one before you today from the Sheriff's Office concerns a grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Sheriff's Office. I believe it's to fight organized crime is what this one is. Correct. And you'll get these on occasion. And what it will do, it basically takes it out of the publication purview and it allows the board delegates authority to Gary and or the chair to sign these documents. We would always inform you what we've done, but it's, it simply would not be uh, posted online. Right. The resolution system. says that they would sign it, and at the first earliest opportunity, they would inform the remainder of the board what document they signed, the content of it, and when they signed it. And it, very few and far between would this occur, like I said, cybersecurity, courthouse security, jail security, organized crime fighting, drug fighting, and things along those lines. Okay. okay. Commissioner Fisher. I know I'm just such a stickler for this, but I'm looking under our, our materials and under county council, what I see is approval of resolution. Oh wait, no, that's the sheriff's office. Where, where, where is this document, Stephen? Janet, is it under, because the, the one under the sheriff's office is just about the body cameras, what shows up there. Yeah, I had a hard time finding it as well, and I had staff uh, this morning actually uncover it, and um, but it's embedded in there somewhere. But it's it's indexed, as I understand it, if you've got the right um, software, um, you can find it indexed. Yeah, Commissioner, it should be under the consent agenda item for the Sheriff's Office. So it'll be further down in the packet. It is. And if you click on Sheriff's Office in the consent agenda, that will take you to the item for the Sheriff's Office. I, I, I reviewed the material. Um, anyone else have any challenges or with this? It makes sense, I understand the sensitivity and um, required, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm looking under the sheriff's office. We have the ABC library district. We have the January 6th supplemental judgment and the yep. body camera purchase. You would need to scroll down, Commissioner, to the consent agenda. It's below technology services in the consent agenda and it says sheriff's office and it has this yep. item listed. Yeah, when, when you click on okay, it. Okay, well, that's, that's, where I, that's where I'm at. Yeah, so, yeah. We, when you click on it, it on the device is how it comes up, so it doesn't always display. Um, so when I did it last night, Shannon, I'll just tell you that it, it just took me to the beginning. It didn't take me to the item, whereas all the other ones did. So there is, there is a, a shortcoming on this one. I don't know what it is. All right, we, we will fix the online system. Commissioners, are you looking at this before today? That's my question to you. Let's move on. Yeah, I just want to read it, and I can't, I don't know where it is. Okay, so. well, let, let, let's go ahead and, and uh, put this on the consent agenda, absent uh, Commissioner Fisher's review um, after, this, after this meeting this morning. If she's got any issues, we can talk about it on Thursday. That sounds great. Thank okay. you. Great. Next up. Thank, Thank you very you much, all. Nancy and Stephen. Stephen, stick around. Next, County Council, approval of an amendment to a lease agreement with Oregon State University Farmer to Farm Program. The amendment extends the program to August 31st. 2034, there is no fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Correct, thank you, Gary. The board has heard this a few times previously under issues. This is the third amendment of a lease that the county has with Oregon State University for property down in the French Prairie area. It allows for some organic and innovative farming to happen. This lease will continue the current lease till 2034, no financial impact. No fiscal impact to the county and no county general funds are involved. This is the one where Mike Bondi was the uh, principal contracting party from OSU. Mr. Fisher, or Schrader, that is. Yeah. 
Um, I just want to say this is a this is a two thumbs up. This is the Willamette Valley Experiment Station, and it's OSU's hub for agriculture, not just our county, but for, for regionally here. So it's you know good bill do pass. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Sounds like a move forward. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Next, finance. Approval of a resolution acknowledging the financial statement findings for fiscal year 2021 and describing corrective action related to Clackamas County Service District Number 5 in accordance with ORS 297.466. The Service District Number 5 is a lighting district. We have Elizabeth and Dan. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Administrator. And uh, Elizabeth Comfer, Finance Director. Um, so we have seven component units in addition to our Clackamas County uh, audited financials and in the wrapping up of service di district number five's audit it's practice to go back and review um, current year expenditures just to see if anything uh, was missed and in fact we did find uh, Krista our deputy finance director found a PGE invoice that had come in after the end of the year that should have been split with prior fiscal year and the current year. Um, so that did uh, mean that when we submitted the material, the financial statements to our audit, auditors, uh, that was not included. So that means that we did not include 100% of the financial information. So this resulted in a finding. Uh, as you see below the resolution, we have uh, addressed this. We've had trained our um, uh, AP staff to also monitor year-end, uh, around year-end invoices to catch this kind of activity. Uh, and service district number five has few invoices of vendors. One of them is PGE, so this one is significant, close to $100,000. Um, and 63% of that should have gone to the prior fiscal year. So this has been addressed with uh, the finance um, team as well to be more uh, diligent on looking at those. And then we've also met with um, our peers, our friends over at DTD to help us watch those when they submit the invoices as well. So we partner in keeping this from occurring again. So the resolution before you is an acknowledgement that you've been made aware of this. Um, and that you've uh, heard that we have come to, um, uh, that we've recommended and responded appropriately to this. Uh, okay. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. This brings up a question in my mind. I know our triple A bond rating is based on our financial strength and our contingencies and reserves. Is our triple A bond rating also based on our processes and procedures and following through on those? Yes, it is. So does this affect our, could this affect our triple A bond rating? I don't believe so. This is a component unit and it is a small fraction of the Clackamas County organization as a whole and we've responded to it swiftly and appropriately and that's what they're looking for is good demonstration of response and uh, preventing this to occur going forward. So my, my question, I see that Mr. Madcore has left the room, it's more of a legal question to some degree and that is um, our, uh, in the con I could see a dual role here but if this moves on to the consent agenda, will this be will this be convened as the lighting district? So there is a, another district role here, right? Are we convened here as the district? Or are we convened here as finance? And is the issue under finance, or is the in, issue under under the district? So I, I need city clarity on that. Administrator, you answer Dan, or do I need to get Stephen? Uh, probably confirm with Stephen to make sure we're clear on that. But, but essentially, this is the role of finance as they complete the audits for the various entities. So I would make the assumption that it would be under finance and the good work that they do. Okay. We can confirm that for you to make sure it's, it's placed mm -hmm. appropriately. Okay. So the question that Commissioner Fisher asked would be um, uh, impact the district or the county or both? Because there's two, there's two hats there, right? Right, and we do, the county staff and finance department do oversee the audit for the service district. So it would reflect on our reputation. Which the steps you see today are those corrective yeah. actions to ensure that we are responding to that. And I guess if I, if I could be so bold as to say a couple of words, 
I'm, the district is under my, my purview. I'm here to accept responsibility for this. I'd like to inform the board uh, directly that not only the corrective actions that Elizabeth identified have been implemented, we have talked directly to our staff as well. Um, this was a one-off. Historically, these charges have been prorated. There was some confusion amongst our support staff and district staff about some possible changes that would benefit the district. Um, they have been informed those. Um, it's basically, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, to be frank. And um, we have informed them of this finding. We have informed them of the fact that this, um, any, in fact, any end of year billing changes that we look to go forward from this point now and in the future are vetted not only through senior DTD management, but also finance as a whole. So uh, I want to make sure that you, the board knew that the corrective action that we have put in place. Administrator Schmidt. I spoke to County Council Madcor, and he recommends that this should be on the agenda twice, once as the county commissioners for the finance department, which does conduct the audits for all the component unions, and you meet as the library district board as well. So that's what we'll do. We'll put on the consent agenda twice. Same item, same staff report, but the board will meet under different hats. I think you said library district, so it's just under the- Lighting line. district, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's Freudian slip, <laughs> lighting district, my apologies. Lighting district, so we'll add it to the consent agenda twice. You'll wear your different hats as you review this this Thursday. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gary, for that. Any other comments? Okay. Okay, uh, great. Thank you, Elizabeth and Dan. Dan, stay here. Next, transportation and development. One, approval to apply for a community development block grant to install a rectangular rapid flash beacon at Southeast Park Avenue, Southeast River Road intersection, requesting $127,680 and grant funding with $31,920 match funded through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. A quick shout out to our H3S partners. They administer the CDBG program. Um, we essentially will be looking for a, a grant request from them to install the improvements identified by the county administrator, which is essentially a rectangular rapid flash beacon adjacent to the Limit View Senior Housing Complex. So if this is eligible, I have a, it's probably not totally related, uh, but I, I, I assume that there's low income eligibility for CDBG money there for is. this? In this area qualifies. In this particular area. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Seeing none. Next. Item two, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation Safety Division for the purposes of safe communities grant renewal. Grant award is $50,000 with a grant match of 20%. Funded through the county road fund, no county general funds are involved. Just want to clarify again and highlight that this is a renewal of an IGA with ODOT. Um, essentially, this year's focus is on the issue of driving while under the influence of marijuana. Grant will also go support overtime for enforcement campaigns that correlate to goals in the traffic s transportation safety action plan, such as school zone enforcement in Lake Oswego, and minor decoy operations with Oregon Liquor Control Commission. So essentially, this is a, a re-upping of a current IGA we have for these supportive services. Okay, concerns? See none. Item three, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation Safety Division for the purposes of pedestrian safety, marketing and enforcement campaign. Grant award is $20,909,004 with a grant match of 20% funded through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. This is another one of our educational efforts through our Drive to Zero campaign. Essentially, these, uh, these dollars will be directed towards education around pedestrian and crosswalk safety. Uh, the outreach efforts will focus on areas where there are concentrated amounts of pedestrians involved in crashes at or near schools and or businesses. Concerns? Seeing none. Item four, approval of a federal lands access program project grant agreement amendment with Western Federal Lands Highway Division for the low, low pass road stabilization and surface preservation project. Overall project cost estimate is $4,052,403 funded through the federal lands access program and $3,241,922 with a county minimum match of 10.2% of up to $371,061. This is very complicated. Yeah. County overmatch of up to $439,420 funded through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. <laughs> Excellent job. <laughs> uh, let me explain that for once. Well, first of all, the project. So essentially, uh, we have submitted this uh, request. It's called a FLAP grant request uh, to stabilize and improve the Lolo Pass Road by extending a section of existing uh, revetment uh, which has been constructed on, on the road as a part of the emergency repair projects. This revetment will essentially 
um, look to or is intended to reduce the likelihood of the Sandy River leaving its banks during future flood events. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the about the funding dialogue up here. So essentially, we uh, submitted with the county's minimum match, which was the 10.27%. Um, when the grant was reviewed and approved, the allocation model got changed slightly. We felt it was better to overmatch it to get the entirety of the project completed, because the entirety of the project cost the $4 million. The entirety of the project cost uh, $4,052,403, which essentially took, took our match from that 10.27 minimum up to 20%, um, but felt it was important to fund the project in its totality. Okay. Commissioner Schroeder. Yeah, I just want to say that um, if I recollect, Dan, Lolo Pass has always been, it seems, under repair one way or another just because of where it is and its location to the, to the, close to the Sandy. It, it, it has historically <laughs> been one of those roads that have been impacted by high water events. Um, we will also yeah. be doing as a part of this project. Um, an overlay, a two inch overlay, asphalt overlay for the 3.99 miles of roadway between um, Highway 26 and the Mount Hood Forest area as well. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. The, the history on this project, as I understand it, there was work done um, in the mid early 2000s. Um, yep. And there was work again because of the flood in, in January of 2011 when I took office, it was one of our emergencies. We put tens of millions of dollars into this road. We and our partners, a number of, it has been a lot of grant requests, federal grant requests, state grant requests to try to facilitate this, yes. Yep, and there's probably more to come, right? The actions taken today are trying to reduce the impacts of, of high water events, which is one of the fundamental options we need to do out there. Um, we're feasible, you know, obviously we can't do everything, but we do what we can do to try to help the community out there. Yep, yep. thank you. Uh, any issues, any other issues or concerns? See none. Item five, approval of an amendment to a contract with DKS Associates for the Clackamas County Regional Freight ITS project. Amendment adds $143,881.26 for a new total not to exceed value of $414,015.23 funded through federal funds with a $15,803.61 match funded through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. You've seen these before, um, to keep this short and sweet, essentially uh, we are uh, requesting the assistance of our design consultant to perform construction contract administration and construction engineering inspection services for this particular project. Uh, there were federal grants that were secured. Uh, we received federal funding to plan, design, and deploy ITX techn technologies on road infrastructure within Clackamas County, ODOT, City of Gladstone, and the City of Wilsonville jurisdictions. These improvements include, but are not limited to, installing radar detection, uh, installing pan tilt zoom cameras, installing wireless interconnects, and furnishing traffic signal controllers. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I see no concerns. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. All right, Commissioners. So what, what I've heard today is for the finance public hearing, we are moving forward to put that on the January 6th business meeting agenda. All the other consent agenda requests are for this Thursday, December 16th, except we're removing the water environment services item. And under finance, we are adding uh, the, li the lighting district also under the library di lighting district. So you'll meet twice under that item. With all of those changes, may we put this on this Thursday's agenda? Looks, yes. looks like you look like Excellent. a yes. Thank you, commissioners. <clears throat> Back to the issues list. Uh, Commissioner Savis, you asked to uh, talk about shelter program. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I appreciate um, after I was a little bit surprised on Thursday, my fault. I didn't, I was so busy, I didn't have a chance to review my emails from earlier today. And thank you, Rod, for sending the, uh, the message. Um, uh, as I shared, I believe it was September, um, I was looking ahead thinking we need to get our shelter program moving forward. And I, when I say that, I had two things in mind. Number one was the inclement weather uh, challenge that we're facing. I feel relatively assured that we've got some of that in place. I think we can always do better, um, <laughs> as I understand it. But primarily uh, was is taking the next steps, as I talked to a lot of people, um, taking the next steps to build upon the success of the Veterans Village model. And I know that that has been um, a, uh, a challenge in a number of ways. And um, I was speaking with Administrator Schmidt and I uh, um, uh, think Friday uh, about this. And um, 
it occurred to me that when the Board of County Commissioners approved the, that, the initial funding to launch that program back in 2016, I believe, um, that task was put, put on the shoulders, if you will, of um, the Housing Authority, H3S, and we realized then that there, really that's not in their, that's really not in their wheelhouse, so to speak. Um, and we formed the Administrator uh, t Housing Task Force with then Administrator um, Krupp at the time and we got our disciplines and departments of the county to work together. It was a, it was a great success, and we helped, I guess we helped work together to, to, make, to make that project whole. And I, I suspect that as a learned lesson from that, it, why, I don't necessarily think that, that nothing's really changed in that regard. I think maybe offering the assistance to um, housing authority or H3S staff or both to do something similar or ask to do something similar, I think is incumbent upon us to realize that from that learned lesson that we should be doing the same. And in that discussion with, with, uh, with uh, Mr. Schmidt, I think that I would, I would recommend that we um, task the um, Administrator Housing Task Force with moving this forward, how to, how to advance it, working with um, H, H3S staff and, HAC and um, Housing Authority staff to advance that, as well as um, the, the turnkey um, opportunity that Commissioner Fisher shared with us that might be um, surfacing early next year um, as a result of perhaps some legislative action. I'd like to get in front of that to make sure we have that all in place. And um, so one ask would be, you know, our, you know, is, is initiating that effort with the administrator's task force. And secondly, uh, I would like to have a work session with my colleagues when we're all here about the criteria, because this is a tough issue for no matter what jurisdiction, no matter where you are, it's a tough issue to make sure that we, um, you know, talk about the, sh the shelter issue from the standpoint of what population are we serving, uh, making sure that if you're going to shelter families, with the, the protections are in place um, for families that don't have drug or alcohol or mental health issues, and they also have a, a low barrier facility for folks that have those challenges, and as well as the, the general houseless population, um, as well as where you place it when it comes to um, census tract, whether it's a high poverty area or it's a safety issue with either crime or safety issues. I think there's a number of criteria that ought to be considered when we talk about locating um, or siting these facilities um, and also being sensitive to the population that they're near services so they can access that, they can access healthy food, uh, a number of things. I, I really think that criteria ought to be spelled out. And uh, so that's the second part of it. The last part of it, I think, is something that I've got 11 years of history here, and this is doesn't reflect on any particular department at all, and that is we have a poor track record of acquiring properties with the, with the um, intent of trying to um, make minor modifications and they're re ready to move in. We've made some substantial purposes, and I never forget what I experienced when I walked in here with the, uh, the Eastern Ridge purchase, which was here, a purchase before I was here, but that Eastern Ridge uh, 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 property had a challenge with um, water intrusion. It's a wet area we live in here. There's areas in, in engineering that uh, when buildings are built that pre prevent those kinds of challenges. But nonetheless, that project blew up on our face. The most recent one being the Webster Road project. It was anticipated we could move in there, buy it for a low amount of dollars and move in with a short amount of time with minimum, uh, uh, minimum improvements and to be ready to go. And here it is years later and millions of dollars later. So what I'm very concerned about is acquisitions and how we bring in some experts that have the gift, the art, the experience of, of assessing properties and whether or not it's a good find or a problem find or maybe a, a property to walk away from. Not dissimilar to people that buy equipment or buy cars, there's a, there's a knack and a gift to, to walking away or knowing when to walk away from a particular property. So those are three things I really like, I think that we ought to be focusing on and, and um, that's what I have for that. And again, there are many aspects of the sheltering program um, that I think are kind of important if, if uh, the way things are happening here um, with regard to perhaps the house's population growing. Uh, I think the concerns are real. 
um, and we need to be better prepared. And I'm just yeah. sad, and I'm pleased, again, with how we're running it. Uh, the Veterans Village, for example, and I think that transition model is a great model, but we need to look at everything. I don't, I don't think anything can be ruled out, and I'm hoping that all five of us can agree that that, that uh, transition sheltering is a good thing. And I do know there's a lot of private sector interest in this and has been also from the faith uh, community as well, wanting to, wanting to do something. And I think we need to step up our game and not be so concerned about whether something is up to standards or it's substandard, but that, we're, that where they're currently at today is, is the worst situation. And anything that just an improvement is one step closer to transitioning into permanent housing. That's my long-winded um, introduction on this particular topic. So, um, comments? Um, Commissioner Scholl. Yeah, I agree with your concerns. Um, you know, as supportive housing, H3S, looks at phasing out of our hotel rooms by the spring, uh, it's imperative that we come up with some sort of alternative that's affordable, sustainable, effective, and can lend support to a greater number of people than we perhaps have never had to deal with before. In other words, economy and numbers is what we need to be looking at, and sustainability. Yeah, thank you. Uh, both Sonia and uh, Commissioner Fisher first, then Commissioner Schrader. Okay, Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I um, see that this is all merging together with what I wanted to talk about based on my email that I received from the Association of Oregon Counties asking if we would be interested if funding became available from the state of looking at turnkey. Don't know if it will happen, but would really like the board's blessing on saying, yes, of course we would be interested we do want to have time for appropriate community engagement. And of course, we would want to make sure that any property that was purchased is a good asset to purchase. So that's one piece. I do think that we do need a full continuum of um, options for transitional. I was having a conversation with um, our community district attorney, Mr. Stewart, and it is re very clear that while the vouchering in hotel motels absolutely works for many people, especially families, it is not appropriate for some individuals that need more individual space and to not be in um, such a group setting. So a whole continuum is needed. The one piece that I want to um, emphasize to the board is the local implementation plan calls for sheltering within it. I um, think our staff have the expertise absolutely to execute on what our goals are as stated in our local implementation plan. As commissioners, we get the um, really wonderful um, opportunity to state what outcomes we want to see and um, our staff can, can implement that. I have complete confidence that they will, they can and will do so. In fact, I was just on a call last night with all the providers looking at where we were. I was just a fly on the wall listening to the conversation. It was amazing and wonderful and the um, recognition of where the gaps are and what needs to do to fill the gaps. Everybody's on the same page here. Let's just go forth and let, um, let our staff do the work, would love the blessing so that I, as the um, AOC liaison for Health and Human Services can report back that yes, of course we would be interested. And I would really like Gary, if he would be so kind or willing to weigh in on what he suggests as process for us moving forward. Okay, okay let's just take these one at a time. Uh, I, I'm, I wouldn't hesitate at all to say or communicate to AOC or the legislature that we are interested. Um, that's my personal opinion. Anyone, anyone disagree or have any other concerns? Uh, Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I, I think we ought to, you know, I think we ought to pursue turnkey. Um, but I think that we, I think what, what uh, and I talked about this with Gina the other night, and by the way, Commissioner Fisher, I was listening last night too, and yeah. I will talk 
I will tell you, they are um, in overdrive, our staff is, and they are wonderful. And I think that he walks on water and love Rod to death. Um, so just to, just to give the kudos to those guys. Um, uh, I think that turnkey is an opportunity that if we have the time to set it up right, we could actually do some real good stuff with it. I think the timing is what really, at least from my perspective, that's why people, people were blindsided, you know, and I was talking to Gina about this and uh, it is working in other counties. So I would like to see us at least not, uh, not put this to bed, but pursue it now that maybe we can get the timing a little more, more involvement with folks. Okay. So. So I'm hearing that a, a, a thumbs up to support our interest in the turnkey. And again, I, I just want to just state uh, re, just briefly, and that is that let, let's be very well prepared. Let's have the work session on the criteria to make sure that we do this right. Um, I was pleased to hear um, that some of our neighboring counties or counties in the state were able to u implement that and buy, you know, their their property values are lower there than here. So we have certain challenges. I would certainly like to make sure there's enough money to buy a sizable one that's in good enough shape that we don't need to put a lot of investment in it. Um, and we can actually be ready to go as literally uh, turnkey as, as implied, implied turnkey that is ready to go. So, um, but yeah, both those, um, uh, number one support for, for that. And again, making sure we're ready I think there's some examples of maybe here, even in this region, the metro region, where they didn't really go so well for a couple of different reasons. But I want to make sure we, we do it right and we buy a property that is um, ready to go and, and doesn't need significant repair and delays and actually helping the people we intend to. And uh, last thing on that one is that, um, you know, at least we, we still have three, is it three motels that we're currently sheltering people in today, right? So, so we still have that opportunity, though it's expensive. Uh, we know that we can get better bang for the buck, perhaps if we're in a ownership position of a good property that doesn't need a lot of investment in it. And anything else on this, uh, Commissioner Fisher? You asked, you want anything else you want to add to Turnkey? Make sure we covered your your topic. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I'll go ahead and email um, Lizzie to make sure that we don't miss an opportunity with what Representative Marsh is exploring with the legislature. And then my only other point is if Gary has anything he wanted to add as far as how we'll move forward and um, making sure our staff has what they need and making sure that the whole board is informed. Yeah, I would say the whole board being informed is critical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Gary, which would, what would you like to add to this? Uh, thank you. For, uh, so on Project Turnkey, first I want to invite Rod or your staff, if you have anything to say, now's the chance to say it, please come forward. So on Project Turnkey, Commissioner Schull, are you also okay with moving forward yes, on please. pursuing this? Yes. So I'm hearing all four commissioners present say yes. So the answer is we're gonna go forward on doing the work, but it's what I ask staff is, you either can use the list we did before or start over or add to the list. We gotta keep the board informed every step of the way. We have to have a community outreach project. So I advise that in January, we brief the board every week, either at executive session if appropriate or in public on exactly where the status is and what our options are so that if and when the state legislature says we're ready, we are ready to go. So do you have anything you'd like to add, Rod, or are you okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumb, okay. So that's what we'll do, commissioners. We'll move forward and get a plan in place and we'll report back to you regularly back in January, starting right. in January. So, so Gary, just, so circling back, yep. um, my proviso on this is that we are prepared in, in all the ways I listed. Number one was acquisition of property, doing the, doing the research and, and the, the siting of all that. And I, and I don't want to put a, a burden upon um, you know, Rod's, Rod's department uh, in something that they're not really experts at, right? right. Um, and I'm not sure necessarily maybe whether it's Jeff Jorgensen's department or whatnot, but there are some people that I know in the private sector that are have a lot of expertise in purchasing properties or stepping back from purchasing properties because they've they've that's what they do for a living so they know how to do it i think we need to make sure that we have the right folks the, the other one is is that a work session i really need to have a work session is it going to be a a, a a facility for families um, because sometimes families and people with addictions or so forth don't mix in the same structure and, and I think we lived that here uh, close to where I live. I had a, a, a learned experience with that. So, um, 
so I want to, my proviso is a work session on, on developing the criteria and using the administrator's housing task force back to both my, my issue that I put on issues and this one as well. Yep, we have a lot of issues here combined, so let me address that next. So as far as the work session, we do have one scheduled for February that we're going to talk about hotels, motels, congregate shelter, long-term, short-term, vets village, all of that. Um, uh, and you did ask for that this year, commissioners. I take responsibility. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and you know staff is overburdened. We, I know we, we have a lot of staff, but we have limited staff that works on board initiatives. So that's on me. I need to better communicate with you up front so you know that, but we did not meet your end of the year deadline. This is currently scheduled for February. We can move it sooner, but this is a capacity issue, commissioners. So Project Turnkey needs to be ready to go like early February. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about timing on getting you what you're asking for in time for, if we do a work session first, that's gonna take staff time away from the Project Turnkey effort. Third, third part, uh, Administrator Housing Task Force. I absolutely agree internally with staff. We need to coordinate and collaborate with H3S. This is not entirely on H3S. And the Housing Task Force has been helpful in the past, especially the Vets Village, as Commissioner Savas mentioned. So we had multiple departments involved, and I do, I do support that at the staff level. And I'll reform that group right away to make sure that we're helping you, Rod, and H3S, because you can't do it yourself. But here's my concern. With respect, commissioners, yeah. When you're involved, commissioners, this is complicated because now I have five commissioners that care deeply about all of these topics. And two of you or less have to be participate in this type of a, a task force. Otherwise, it's a public meeting, which is not a bad thing, but we can't have those open conversations at the staff level with a public setter, setting. So I'm, I'm, cons I'm, com I'm, conf I'm complicated because I, I know currently Commissioner Savis and Schrader in the past has sat on the housing task force. But I know Commissioner Schell, Commissioner Fisher, and Chair Smith also care deeply. And everything we do has to be brought before the full board, absolutely true. So I just need your help, Commissioners, on how to have your involvement with this group. I value oh. it and welcome it, but I know all five of you want to do it. So how do I maneuver yeah. that? I need so, your help. So I have a suggestion then about that, because yes. I do feel that everybody wants to be involved in this. Why don't we let Paul kind of be the whatever? I will be glad to rotate in and out as necessary. Does that make sense? In other words, we need to share the love a little bit. It, would that be acceptable to folks? You know, kind of like, you know, like, like with MPAC the other day, I screwed up and I wish I'd have, we don't, I don't have an alternate yet. And I did something on the fly. And so basically, you know, which was problematic. So it isn't a bad idea to have more than one person you know, kind of involved in all of this. And I'm at the point where I've got to, I trust my, I will trust my commissioners to tell me what I need to know when I need to know it and as soon as possible as they deem appropriate. Will that help, Gary? That certainly is an option. Uh, Commissioner Fisher has uh, no, What do you think, Paul? Uh, we, yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll respond to Commissioner Schrader's question there um, and then take Commissioner uh, Fisher's comments. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Um, my only, my only um, process or thought right now um, is that, you know, we need to be able to be nimble. And I know that as we, yeah. as when we, you work on something, if, if someone is, let's say, last in the loop to show up at a meeting or be part of that, they have to learn what it's all about. And I think that, 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 um, that learning curve will, be, will slow the process down. I don't think the housing task force will be as nimble because we have that, con you know, that continuum of the process and where we're going. So that might be a disruption in and of itself, oh. but maybe there's another way we can do it in a way it's informative that we're you know, sharing at these Tuesday issue sessions uh, what comes out of those so everyone's informed. And um, I, I don't see anything, but we, you know, we don't want to violate public meetings law either, but we also want to be nimble. So that, that would be my only comment, Commissioner Schrader. So with that, uh, Commissioner Fisher, your hands up. Yeah, thank, thank you. I think that this is important enough and there's enough political interest that staff should proceed and then we get briefed as an entire board. And we have a structure now where we have flexibility to schedule additional time if needed. I really want us to team on this as an entire board. I think that's very, very important and we all need to get the information together. This is our opportunity 
and we need to be bold. Staff, they've done, I've watched them every step of the way, guide with community input, the local implementation plan, which we approved. It is a very, very good roadmap to where we need to go. I really think we need to rely on their incredible substantive expertise. We set the goals and the framework and make sure that we are being responsible and um, that I really think that we need to let staff do their work. And it will be, um, it will free them up too to be able to be nimble and then su to suggest to us. But as a board, we get to say we would like to have more briefings. And I think that our staff would welcome that because this is important enough for us all to engage. Yeah, I, well, I, thank you, Commissioner Fisher. I appreciate that. Um, I just, I guess, come without this with the experience of, of um, from the time that the money was uh, allocated and budgeted for the Veterans Village to the time and the politics and the hangups that it took. I think the learned experience working with Administrator Krupp and Administrator Schmidt is that um, success really depended on being um, nimble and expedient where, where necessary and having the working relationship. And I think the politics, frankly, slowed it down. And my concern is that um, not, this is no reflection on anyone here that it's, um, um, you know, we, uh, we I, I brought this up in September, October, and here we are today's December, and we're talking about a meeting in February. That should be an example that we need to have something more nimble than that and, and provide the assistance and the experiences to help those departmental and bring the resources to bear um, and just eliminate the politics fr from that. So I, I, would, I would say experience has proven that it worked well in the past and I would be afraid, um, again, self-evident uh, self here um, that um, you know, the, the, the status quo um, and the need for other resources, outside resources, internal resources is, is, is in incredibly important. Just the moving and the structure of, of those of those pods was a huge lift, and that took a private, uh, personal, staff assistance to make that happen. Um, I, I I I'm going to just say a shout out to number one Vahid and PSU students that designed those pods. What's got forgotten is that that was an effort to uh, maximize resources. That was an effort to engage the students in, in engineering at PSU. That was, an, that was a community lift and a community effort. And um, it, was, it was unfortunate that those were criticized by some people as being substandard or being sh garden sheds, essentially. Um, and they have served a purpose. And I, I, that, that it's just unfortunate. Again, that's politics. Mm -hmm. That's politics. We provided uh, that facility has been pretty well renowned and use an example. People are still touring that and talking about it as, as a success. It's not permanent housing. It's transitional housing. So kudos to all the staff that helped in that, in that last lift. But I certainly don't want to, we can't afford to slow this down. We need to get this train moving and now. And um, I, I'm just saddened that it's, that you know, the months have gone by, but I appreciate uh, Commissioner Schmidt, or Administrator Schmidt's um, suggestion of re-engaging re that, that task force. I think that would be able to get us going, at least in the interim, to get, get this going and get the departments to start talking to one another. Mm -hmm. has your hand raised. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, no, I can't remember what I was going to say. But I don't think Gary suggests that commissioners be part of re-engaging that administrator's task force. Our county administrator, his job is to make sure that our direction gets implemented. And um, that's just, and uh, Gary, you can add if you like. Okay, here's, uh, here, uh, uh, here's what we'll do, what I propose. First, project turnkey, yes, staff's gonna move forward and start the work on that effort. Yes, I'm re reforming or uh, restarting the Administrator's Housing Task Force for, for immediately staff only, and I, I just need time to thank commissioners. And when you're back in January, I'll have a plan for you. Either we'll rotate commissioner attendance Mm. Or we're just going to do it in public. Okay, that, that's really the two options. I'll report back to you on that. Please give me two weeks to think about it. Yeah, but I'm definitely going to form the staff group part of it. Well, right away, so we can start offering help on these initiatives. We'll get a policy session scheduled. I'll talk with the offline staff about how we'll make this all work. So yes, I hear very clearly what the direction is. Mm -hmm. 
Please let me get back to you in January on commissioner what the commissioner role looks like if that's acceptable, please. Okay, and uh, Gary, maybe we could do it with a uh, some kind of a, a Gantt chart, basically timelines that that ex that del has deliverables and anticipated yeah. because yeah. without without uh, you know again my last experience without really measurements and metrics and meeting goals and deadlines, I don't want to find ourselves stalled out, yep. you know, and have that whole turnkey thing pass us by or a sheltering opportunity pass us by. Yep. We have people, nonprofits, we have a lot of also um, private sector folks that are willing to contribute. Um, I was, I made number, uh, numerous connections with a lot of folks that have reached out and say, we need to we need to do the next one, we need to do the next one, and we were getting stalled out in politics. It's just politics that are bogging us down. Yeah. Understood, and we'll do, yes. Okay. So that brings us to issues. Um, uh, commissioners, who'd like to go first? I'd be happy to. Commissioner Scholl. Yes, good morning. Um, first of all, I'd like to say Thank you to Deborah Mason and staff at the Clackamas Service Center ribbon cutting ceremony last Friday morning at their new warehouse. They're doing a great job for Clackamas County. And also, I'd like to say thank you to the many wonderful nonprofits who are working to bring Christmas joy and comfort to our people of Clackamas County this Christmas season. They're doing a great job out there. Um, Saturday morning, Oksana and I were toy volunteers with Compassion and Action of Clackamas County, right over here at the Berry Hill Shopping Center in Oregon City. Darlene has been doing that for 31 years, bringing Christmas joy to needy families and children uh, by the tens of thousands. And she's just doing a wonderful job. For people who want to help out, see her website, Compassion and Action of Clackamas County. You'll be glad you did. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Justice Raji and Katrina Holland from Reimagine Oregon for putting on the gathering for elected officials last Friday to inform us of what their organization is about. I really appreciate that. Um, then also last night, uh, Vahid Brown from our Supportive Housing put on a, a meeting about the status of supportive housing in Clackamas County. It was very informative. I really appreciate all the work they're doing. But the one takeaway that I want to share with the commissioners this morning was uh, they mentioned last night that the, the seniors of Clackamas County is the fastest growing population that needs supportive housing. And I like the other commissioners to think about that because we need to be looking ahead and seeing what we can do to help that growing need amongst our senior citizens. And then uh, the end of this week, I'll be going to Roseburg to represent the county at the Association of ONC Counties for their annual membership meeting. I look forward to doing that. Uh, and then I just want to make one comment about Veterans Village. When I was there and visited the residents, I heard nothing but glowing remarks from them on how effective it is and how helpful that facility is for some of our veterans. And I think the paradigm of Veterans Village is something that could be applied, like you suggested, to other populations in the county. And so as we look at our, our need to support those in need for housing, I think that Veterans Village example needs to be looked at and replicated for other groups of people. Thank you. Yeah. It's also proven to be neighborhood friendly. Yes. Which I think is huge. And that's one, I think that ought to be one of our criteria to make sure we're neighborhood friendly. Exactly. And that people feel safe and they, and they enjoy it. So it, as you know, there's been situations again with mixed populations where sometimes they, the, some of those populations and families don't feel safe when there's someone who's got a, a, a perhaps an addiction challenge. Exactly time. right. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Schrader. Let me unmute here. Hopefully the dogs won't bark. Well, a couple of things. I want to thank Gary. For, um, <clears throat> we had a meeting with Oregon City yesterday um, that was dealing with 
uh, again with their uh, police chief uh, who gave us and, and the mayor, uh, Rachel Lyle Smith, and uh, we've given us uh, kind of a, an idea of what's been happening on the ground and how we could actually collaborate um, more closely with one another. Um, Oregon City said they'd be willing to put some of their own ARPA dollars into helping to solve the houselessness problem, which I think was wonderful. And uh, Mayor uh, Smith uh, suggested that we actually really kind of get a subset of cities. And I thought, Paul, oh, we could do this and colleagues who see four potentially, or get a subset of cities that are actively working on this to, to maybe collaborate with ways that we can really help co-solve co these issues and problems. So uh, Gary, do you have anything else to add? To that or anything you know you were there and i thought it was a good conversation and yes uh, thank you commissioner so this is oh. a re request by the city of oregon city to discuss yep. at least with oregon city how the county and oregon city better collaborates on homelessness mm -hmm. mental health uh, public safety all of that connection we had a great conversation and yes mayor lyle smith recommended we need to have more conversations like this with the other cities i know yeah. we've done that at c4 already but i think there's a subset of the full c4 that should yeah. have this conversation so we'll I, 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 I think that's I think that's workable. I think that what I was I was pleased to hear because I had kind of said to Joe Buck at one point, you know, why don't we pull dollars if we can, you know, to do that. And and um, and speaking of which, the other thing that I've asked Gary to put at least on the list, I make no promises to people when it comes to our funds because that's going to be a team group decision. But proud ground. Um, wants to look at developing that middle level housing of people who could potentially move into home ownership um, at, uh, in Lake Oswego. And I think that's more like 60% 60, 60 and below AMI, but folks who just kind of need to have that affordability uh, because it builds, you know, prosperity and wealth and, you know, helps people, you know, so it's again that it's the middle of the continuum. Uh, they wrote a, us a letter. I've given it to Gary. Gary, share it with everybody, whatever. Um, and I just asked to have it put on the ARPA list with no guarantees. Uh, you know, they I did an ask of like $800,000. And of course, we're going to keep getting these I know we're getting lists of people who are asking for ARPA dollars, and I'm very clear that I, I'm more than happy to put it, at least kind of get it up on the whiteboard, but I can't make promises. Um, but I just thought I'd let you know that that discussion is happening, and I guess they're going to ask, um, like us, we go for an additional $800,000 to in order to move forward with a project here with the property that they have. So just to give you a heads up, um, I did just say, you know, I don't know if it will move forward or not. Um, I'm not until we have a discussion about where our priorities are. But it is not transitional housing. It's more the middle, middle, you know, middle um, affordability kind of a housing project. So anyway, that's all I have. Yeah, well, I'd certainly be inclined to think that. Um you know, any kind of partnerships with the cities uh, is a yeah. good thing, especially when it relates to housing. Um, you know, just keeping in mind goal goal 10 um, yep. is a huge part of that. And I, you know, I, I think we could all probably agree that if we all did our part and had more housing in place, that maybe rents would be cheaper to be more supply and less yeah. people on the street. So um, love to have that conversation. And if C4 is the place, great. If it's a subset of that, we can do a subset of that. Um, but. Um, I, I too am hearing there's expectations from city councilors and mayors that we do more. And yep. I, I've been trying to, like you have, Commissioner Schrader, thank you, and that is say it's a partnership. What can you do as well? And if it's property or if it's funds or whatever it may be, whatever we can do to pull our resources together um, is a value. We're, we're, we're helping the same people. Uh, they're, all, they're all citizens of this county and this region, and we all need to think about that in that context. So thank you. Okay. Next up, Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. I um, appreciated Commissioner Scholl joining me for the reimagine um, meeting that happened, was it Friday? That was Friday, wasn't it? Gosh, time, time just kind of slips away. 
We, um, in preparing for that, Martine uh, worked with me to make sure that our spreadsheet was up to date on all of the things that we have accomplished. There were a list of things that we have not or will not accomplish, which I went over. Um, a couple of the things that were on that list, it's kind of like, gosh, don't really know how this got on the list in the first place. But one was to make the sheriff appointed and not elected. And one another one was to have more control over sheriff's budgets. That were two of the things that I said um, weren't going to happen. And then the third thing was um, there was an interest from the group to have community engagement resulting in the, um, I mean, I'm paraphrasing here. I should be reading it actually in this report, but in, in, in alignment with divestment in law enforcement. And I really spoke to the group and said, well, yes and no. First of all, Clackamas County will not divest in law enforcement. In fact, we have invested with our support of the public safety levy, which actually helps us on our journey towards more equity and support for our sheriff's office with the body cameras, which we discussed today. And also along these lines, there is community engagement happening regarding racial equity. We have our um, LIPSIC, our local um, public safety coordinating council, which has a specific um, subcommittee that is working on this. And we also are engaged in other efforts with the sheriff's office on these issues. I did let the group know that our sheriff has been very responsive to us. She's on the other end of our cell phones. My cell phone, I know she's on the other end of every one of our cell phones in addressing issues of concern and felt like we have a very good partnership. A big issue that came up from that group is the concern about sweeps of homeless camps. And we all know in Clackamas County, we don't see in Clackamas County what is seen in Portland. She confirmed with me that there are not sweeps happening in Clackamas County. However, she did have word that there is some removal from ODOT. And so that's something that I wanna bring back and figure out what's going on and see, I'm not sure the great, correct avenue about that, but it's important that now that we're um, implementing and we have the bones and the infrastructure of our homeless services, that we get those navigation resources out to any um, camps that may be in our wooded areas or along the highway so that we can get those people and not just move them around, but get them into services and support. Um, so Commissioner Scholl, I really appreciated being there with me. I feel like um, our schedules have not allowed other commissioners to join. I um, am asking that if anybody wants to have a briefing that we have Martine do that, she really does a great job. I feel so blessed to have had her support for this last meeting. Want to encourage my other commissioners, if there's more than three that want to be briefed before the next meeting that is happening in January, then we could do it in a public session. There's full transparency here. Commissioner Schull expressed an interest um, with me. We were texting back and forth um, during the meeting just to get feedback and share ideas and concerns. He's interested in sharing where we're moving in Clackamas County next month. And I'm happy to um, support him in that and be there since I've got the background and history on it. But the more engagement, every one of our initiatives, it isn't on Commissioner Fisher or Commissioner Schrader or Commissioner Savices. It is on our whole board of county commissioners. That's been a strategy that we have implemented and we are all in on the things that we've done. And we've done a lot, you guys. It's been pretty amazing when you look at our accomplishments. The next step that the Reimagine is asking is what is a policy initiative for the future? And one thing that Gary has been working on with our equity office is to sort of systemize equity liaisons within our county structures. And so there'll be more to come on that but we are taking steps to um, do the good work. And so that's that update. Sorry, it was so long winded, but I felt like it was such a positive meeting. There was a lot to share. You can go to the website of Reimagine and see our spreadsheet and read about it. It's, um, it's all there for the public to see. 
Um, the other thing I responded, I think we all got a letter from um, our Clackamas County Business Alliance um, thanking this board for responding to the Here Together letter, thanking us for our transparency, for dedicating ARPA dollars, for um, just sort of filling in the blanks of what wasn't really understood about how we are moving forward with the homeless services measure. Um, and also at the bottom of that letter was a request for their dues to be paid. They were due, I believe, in the summer. They haven't been paid yet. It's a $10,000 ask. And so I just want to suggest that we authorize that payment from the board and just get that done so that they can have that certainty before the end of the year. So that's my request of the board. Would love some feedback on that. Sure. Um, so um, Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I'd like to wait until the chair gets back on this one, because I think that um, she's been very prickly over this issue. And uh, because um, because the CCBA, they are their nonprofit. We've always supported them. And I think her issue has been, I can't really speak for her. They should have at least given us a heads up or talked to us first to hear our side of the story. Um, and I think that we can continue to support the CCBA, but I'd like to have the chance to make sure that the chair is there because she's, she feels that they needed to remove their um, name from the letter, uh, which I frankly will say this, that I, I thought here together was really mean-spirited and disingenuous with that letter. And um, I think it's politically motivated um, because of the people who are running it. Uh, and I'm, not, I'm talking about the professionals they're running it. The, the nonprofit, the head of the nonprofit and, and the lobbying. Um, I've been very, very disappointed in their attitude towards us and their, how dare they give us a C after all the years that we've been working on houselessness, that kind of hubris and pride and mean spiritedness, I have no patience for. Now, I believe that the CCBA, they put, they, did, they put their name on it. I'm not upset with them. I think, I think the whole thing is the bottom of the birdcage right now. You send this stuff out, it's the bottom of the birdcage, it's over with. I think we have to repair that relationship with the CCBA. And um, I've talked with Nina Carlson about this um, uh, on more than one occasion. So I think that will happen, but I would like to wait until January to have that happen. And I know if Here Together is mad at me so much, what, they can always call me directly. Um, I've never really, they've never given me that courtesy, uh, actually. <laughs> and um, tell them how hurtful and how uh, awful they have been towards this county when we have worked so hard for all the years I've been here to solve this problem. And I continue to remind them we are regional players will do it because the region voted for it, but they did not convince our own electorate. And, um, and frankly, I don't think they particularly care about the poverty or houselessness in the rural areas one bit. So sorry, that's my feelings on this. So I'd be glad to work the CCBA thing. I think that we should have them as partners uh, I don't expect them to agree with us on anything all the time, but we should at least have a courtesy to know when those kinds of political narratives are out there to, to treat this county as if we're second class and to put us in that kind of position, we need to at least have our story out there as well. And frankly, that's exactly how I feel we're being treated. We don't need to see, we're an A-plus county. I think those folks need to understand that. And I feel very obviously, I feel very strongly about this. So let's wait till January. I'd like to talk to the chair. You know, I think that we can work this through and I think it will improve the relationship. So at least we know we're communicating with each other with the CCBA before they take external narratives because people uh, are playing politics with 
poor people and homeless people's lives in my humble opinion. Okay, that's it. Thank Sorry. You. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Fisher, or not Mr. Schrader, for responding to Commissioner Fisher's um, invite to comment, and I'll, I'll take that opportunity here as well. Um, my, my response is that um, I, I, I read the letter. Um, granted, I think maybe the letter could have, you know, maybe been a little bit more um, informative as to the $14.1 or $14.2 million commitment that we've made, by the way, um, that we simply haven't identified all the resources, how we're going to make that through the next rest of the year. Hopefully we will um, if this IGA with uh, Metro is signed. But I, I, I share your concerns, and I think there's value, Commissioner Schrader, in having the conversation uh, with Commissioner Smith in attendance. However, um, being a business person and being understanding, um, having to make payroll, having the, the financial pressures of making ends meet as a small business, I'm also sensitive to the impacts of having something that was expected in July, and here it is December, and they don't have the resources. So maybe at the very least, my olive branch here, my go-between is maybe if there's someone make a motion to at least advance 5,000 of the $10,000 request and to discuss the next 5,000 with the board um, in January. That's my, that's, my, that's my suggestion to my colleagues. Uh, so, Commissioner Scholl, do you have any comments? Uh, question, that, that, that's 5,000 that you would like to advance at this time? The payment, I believe, is, is the, 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 our contribution is $10,000, correct? $10,000 total, yes. Yeah, so we can either do the full 10 or we can do the five, but I think Commissioner Schrader makes some good points, and I think Commissioner Smith would like to have uh, the opportunity to opine here as well. So okay. that would open the door for maybe both, everyone gets a little bit of something here. Commissioner Fisher, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are, you know, we contribute to the West um, Business or Economic Alliance and at $10,000, it seems kind of icky to me. I wasn't aware of all, I mean, I appreciate Commissioner Schrader, you sharing all of those thoughts. I am concerned that because we don't like what somebody says when they provide a really important um, the business community, a forum for advancing our business interests that we invest in because we as commissioners need that support. I'm concerned if we don't like what they say, that we're retaliating somehow and withholding their dues that were supposed to be paid months ago. Ugh, that feels icky to me. I would rather make a motion for 10,000 to have us do it. If we can only get five, um, I would I would support that as well. I um, I just have a problem. I don't like like the sense of retaliating. And Commissioner Schrader, I appreciated everything that you said. I was very um, not happy, I will say, with seeing that we were given a C because this board, although much slower, we all know than I wanted, but still we got there. We got there to have the bones of the infrastructure in order to get all of the services out the door for our local implementation plan. And that was a huge heavy lift. And we did that as a team with a 5-0 vote. And so I I hear you, I was upset, but I have to say that the community engaging with us is very, very helpful. And I appreciated the input from all of those stakeholders weighing in and letting us know what they thought. And I especially appreciated there was part of that letter that I absolutely didn't understand. And it talked about contracts being delayed and uncertain for a nonprofit community. And I didn't have any idea what they were talking about. I do need to let the board know because I haven't done this yet. I followed up, I worked with Rod Cook. I did send a very detailed answer to Mayor Gamba who was asking about this. We have resolved that issue with the nonprofits. They are contracts are being extended. And then when the next round of homeless services dollars comes about, available, they can compete. We have to recognize that the decisions that this board made or that H or HAC C made. C Commissioner Fisher, we're running out of time. Could you could you be brief? Okay. Just sure to stop or switch around the procurement processes because we we shifted things in not dedicating our current resources to the rural areas so that we would 
be able to roll out the homeless services measures had some pretty significant consequences. That our staff has worked, they fixed that. I appreciated knowing that. I had no idea. So that's my view. Um, but I'm with you, Commissioner Schrader. I think that I don't know if we're quite at an A. We'll be in an A when we're really after we get this IGA done and we get some more resources and we put them out there. But I think Commissioner Fisher, please. Being, thank you. I think that being um, thoughtful, conscientious, and methodical is important, and we need to do this right. So I hear you. Yeah, well, there's, I, I think we're conflating a couple of different issues here, and I think we've kind of wandered off quite a bit here. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is that CCBA did not write the original letter. They were, they were told things, I think, that frankly, um, had I not been wiser and more knowledgeable, I too probably would have signed on the letter if, if it was put, framed in a context of which I, I suspect it was. So um, I think we all have a responsibility, I'm going to say all, together, we need to be, be working together on this on this human this crisis. This is a, this is a human crisis, and to be political about it, I think, is what Commissioner Schrader's point has been, um, and, and it, mine as well. It should not be political. It ought to be a teamwork effort. And um, it was very clear from the beginning that we were responding. Uh, Commissioner Schrader and I and others were responding to information that was not in full context, was not completely accurate, and mayors, elected officials, public, private, everyone responded to, to that information. And I think that was unfortunate because that, that steered, that, that lacked the confidence and the trust in our constituency, that we weren't doing things. We were accused of cutting $8.1 million, a number of things that were just let up. And, and instead of us doing our work and trying to advance things, we were busy trying to to, to clarify or to, to put an end to these some, some false assumptions that were being made. So I can't fault CCBA for that. So I to expedite things because we're running out of time here. Mm -hmm. I, I would entertain a motion to approve $5,000 to the CCBA payment um, and consider the next five next year. So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? All second it. It's been moved and seconded to approve. Uh, 5, hey, Commissioner Schrader, you're muted. She's trying to talk. Sorry, I, se Commissioner I seconded Thomas. it, but I would strongly suggest mm -hmm. that um, someone give Chair Smith a call. Mm. And if do, am I is that you or me, Paul? <laughs> um, <laughs> Let her know. I'm okay. I, I'm not objecting to giving them the money at all. I think what's done is done, and I think it's opened up a line of communication. I don't think Commissioner uh, Chair Smith feels that way, so we, we owe her we owe her a call to let her know and to let her, if she's upset, be upset. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So I will second that. Okay, Paul, give him five thousand. Okay, been moved okay. by Commissioner Scholl, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Any other discussion? Shannon, please take yes. the poll. Oh, oh, oh sorry, uh, my only Fisher, go ahead. comment is that I'm going to support this today, but my official position is that we, as a board, should. Um, allocate the ten thousand dollars due to CCBA that was pay was due to us to be paid in June, and we should not withhold five thousand dollars. But I will not be a no vote. I will not let the perfect be the enemy of the good, and I'm going to support this. But I strongly um, think that retribution from this board is not a precedent we want to set. Right, right. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait a minute. Now, this is not retribution. Okay. This is not retribution. I don't do retribution. Even when the CCPA endorsed Tootie years ago, when I was a commissioner, I have never exacted, I, I don't do that. This is trying to make sure that all five of us on the board, from my perspective, because we have someone who's really upset that we get that calmed down okay. so we can okay. move ahead with the relationship with them. That's all this is, okay? Not retribution. Please don't use that word around me because it's just not so. Right. I, so thank you, Commissioner Schrader. <laughs> okay, Shannon, please take the poll. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Vice Chair Savas. Aye. Motion carries. We will pay five thousand uh, dollars to advance a payment and and uh, consider the other five thousand next year. I will say that I will probably support the $5,000 payment in full. I do not believe 
um, that CCBA is at fault for what they were informed of. So I would say it was an honest mistake. Yeah. You mean the ten thousand dollars, Commissioner Savas? Yeah, the, for the, the total payment of being $10,000, I will support the next five for a total of 10. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, thank you. And, uh, is there any, get... and so uh, the last of the comments will be mine for my issues. Oh, wait, Commissioner Savas, I'm sorry, but I wasn't quite done with my comments. One more item to lay, and it's just guys, we're getting to the end of the year, right? And we just have so much work to do. I want my fellow commissioners to know that I've been working with staff. I'm really wanting to understand when we approved or the commission, I voted no, but the full commission voted to approve the 13 million based on lost revenue. I am asking staff to provide for me, why did we have lost revenue? How did it impact operations? And how will paying back that lost revenue help us towards recovery. So Kimberly's been working with Nancy, been working with departments. I will share that with everyone when we get it. I believe that transparency is very important as we're dealing with ARPA dollars. And Commissioner Schrader, I wanna thank you for bringing up that you received a letter um, regarding Proud Ground and middle housing. I have not seen that. If I missed an email, if somebody, I just want to let, put it out there, get me what I want to see what requests are coming in. Okay, in okay, that, that, that's a, a point of order. Uh, we are running late. So yeah, I, I, I don't, I think some of this stuff can be online discussions and not, not necessarily occupy the time. We're over time. Um, I, I, I t there was you, something was just said here that kind of triggered my, uh, made me very uneasy, uh, Commissioner Fisher. Uh, uh, Administrator Schmidt, you have a comment. Yes, the proud ground material was not sent to you, commissioners, because we're putting it all together in a single packet for a policy session on January 5th of every single request you received with detailed an analysis and information by every request, which was Commissioner Fisher's original request. The lost revenue, respectfully, Commissioner, you got that memo, commissioners. You had that. Nothing's being withheld from you. Commissioner Fisher had further questions, which is absolutely appropriate, which we're answering. But we are not hiding the ball from you, commissioners. You had a memo on all the lost revenue and where it was going. I have to say that, thank you. Yeah, I, I, just, I just took offense to the, 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 the uh, suggestion that somehow something wasn't transparent. And if there's, if there's something to that that's valid, I'm all ears, but, but I, I, I don't, you know, I, I think we need to be careful when we, when we uh, accuse someone of not being transparent. Um, oh, Commissioner Savas, I wasn't accusing anyone of anything, but when that vote was taken, we had departments in numbers and no explanation. So that's why I voted no. I just wanted my fellow commissioners to know that I'm following up. I do trust our staff. I just want the information because it's a lot of money and I believe we have a responsibility. Okay, point taken. Um, so that concludes your comments, Commissioner Fisher for today? Yes, thank you. And I'm sorry for going over. All right, um, so just briefly, uh, I too, um, attended the event on Saturday, uh, the Compassion in Action event. What time did you go, Commissioner Scholl? Uh, I was there at 0900. Okay. And we got, I was supposed to be there till noon, but we did so many toys so fast that I was relieved at about 1030. Yeah, I, I, it, was, uh, it was very heartfelt to grab the sheets of paper and look at the names and the children and the ages and then, and then do the shopping and fill the bags. That was uh, very... Uh, it was a, just a very touching moment for me to realize um, as a kid who grew up in a family of seven, um, grew up poor uh, around Christmas time, knowing the impacts of not really having a whole lot, uh, let alone food. So um, with that, um, and I, I will just abbreviate uh, my comments and just leave it at that. And uh, we're adjourned. Good job.